February the 13th, 2021. Guys, I hope everyone's staying warm. Uh, you're looking at the real-time solar wind speed, and um, it, it includes the temperature, which is in the green line at the bottom, and this is a three-day chart. Notice it goes from zero uh, up through the all the hours in UTC time. And uh, as we move into today on the 13th, we're into much higher solar wind. Now, at 0600 hours UTC time, the ocean just off the Fukushima, uh, Fukushima prefecture in Japan was hit by a 7.1 earthquake right here, guys. It shook them pretty hard. I don't have a lot of reports, uh, but it was offshore. There's no tsunami warnings, but this is just east of what's called, or west of the Japan Trench that you see the red line in the bottom of the corner, and you've had a couple of aftershocks. The, this energy has traveled north up the um, Ring of Fire, guys, and we're getting some pressure along the Alaskan Aleutian Islands also, but this is the strongest of the quakes. We haven't got any reports out of uh, there yet. Uh, it's a very delicate situation. You can see Fukushima to the left of the uh, quake um map but this japan trench is a part of a subduction zone and the it's actually three plates right here in this area japan is surrounded both uh, on the left and right side by subduction plates so you can expect it now it's been what about 10 years or so since we had the fukushima quake now again the energy has moved north you've got um smaller quake just north of this large one you've also got a 6.0 down off Papua new guinea california you got a 4.0 not that strong but here you've got a 5.3 in the aleutians and again the kamchaka russia island quake so the energy has been transferring now remember i said that that could possibly happen because the 7.0 quakes that we were having a few days ago were south of this Tokyo quake, remember? Down off of Australia and close to uh, Fiji in that area. But going back at the large quake at 0600 hours, the 7.1, if you look at the time stamp on there, that's right in this area here. And so when we're looking at the solar wind speed from this particular satellite, we're dealing with an early warning system. Depending on the solar wind, it's going to hit our satellites before it hits our planet. So you've got a little delay. Now let's look at the Solar Dynamics Observatory images. This is a satellite that gives us Earth-facing perspectives over Sun. There's a long filament. I know it's hard to see there, but we actually watch that filament come around the bottom left end with this uh, sunspot. But over here we've had a filament eruption and a coronal mass ejection on this side of the sun and we're what we're doing we're feeling pressure from a coronal opening that's indicated in the darker images here i'll show you another filtered image and from a coronal mass ejection that came off the bottom right corner of the sun most of the activities in the southern hemisphere of the sun because its magnetic poles have changed and they do it um, every solar cycle which is around 11.8 years but this long filament that you can barely see here is very close to a sunspot. And that's a, like throwing a match uh, on a, in gasoline, guys. Look at the size of it. It's probably close to half the distance across the sun. And you could take 99 of our planets and line them up. And it would just go make one line across that, the sun. That's the uh, scale we're dealing with. Now, the darker areas here are the coronal holes and that's openings in the magnetic canopy of the sun that allow the solar stream not to be captured by the magnetic canopy but to come towards the planets <clears throat> and we're feeling that and you can also see how long this filament is that thing needs to stay intact they're very dangerous and with the sunspot right above it again that's a trigger mechanism so again dealing with um uh, high solar wind from these openings plus the pressure even though it was a side blast of the coronal mass ejection all of these events add up and we're so, uh, seeing the effect on our tectonic plates here another sun facing satellite called soho and this is the coronal mass ejection i'm talking about when that filament rose on the bottom right corner this is what happened your time stamps at the bottom going from the 10th to the 11th 
you'll see the pressure start to build as that filament starts to rise. There's a small one on the left, but the big one right there. And in the last frame, you can see energy still streaming away from the sun. Let's look at it closer. Same satellite, but a different camera that gives us a much closer perspective. Again, we're at the 12th, and there is the corona mass ejection. Again, notice and as it plays back through after the initial explosion, the energy is still streaming from the sun from that area. Now, the red disk is called an occult disk. It blocks the sun so we can see around it. But the sun is only the size of the white circle. There it goes. Energy still streaming. It wasn't just like a one-time a one blast. It was a release of energy followed by a, a very large flow on a, um, if you look at it to scale. But guys, that's what we're dealing with now. The solar wind's going to stay up for the next few days. Watch for pressure moving around the ring of fire. It's a heads up. Be safe.